an introduction. Um, <laughs> this, is, this has been a crazy ride. It's going to be a crazy ride. Hi. <laughs> awesome. So before we, we start, uh, I want to thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, I know you're busy. And for everybody who doesn't know Mary, Mary English is a, she's a, a great, great astrologer. I want to give a shout out to Stephanie from Stelliums Astrology. She uh, introduced me to Mary. Uh, and then I watched her videos and everything. So she has been an astrologer for many, many years, decades, written 16 books on astrology. She's a member of, uh, uh, on the board of um, Astrology Association, right? If I'm, yes. Yes. And she has her podcast, Learn Astrology with Mary, which is beautiful. Um, and I'm so happy and thrilled that I have her here today. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much, Jasmine. There was all these technical hitches. I didn't have yeah. back in the day. We're, I know. We're fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, for everybody who is listening, um, uh, please follow Mary. Uh, she's new on Instagram. So the reason I invited her, I want her to, to give to give her a shout out to her and to, to her account. She has beautiful content. You can learn so much from her. And today, um, Mary chose to talk about astro chart shapes, which yes. is an amazing topic. Um, uh, so welcome, Mary, and tell us more. What what are these shapes? What can they be? I know there are many of them. But why are they important, for example? Why, if you have something, some big shape in our chart, why is that important? Let's start okay. there. The thing about chart shapes, they're different from aspect shapes. Chart shapes is if you imagine your chart, you take all the aspect lines out and you just plump each planet somewhere around a circle. It doesn't matter what house system you use. It was a system developed by a guy called Mark Edmund Jones, in, probably in about the 1800s. Um, and he was an American astrologer. And so he developed this concept that the positioning of the planets around the circle of your chart indicates something about the energies of you as a person and he was a firm believer and so am I that when you're analyzing a chart before you've gone anywhere ascendant sun moon blah blah, blah which are important things you just concentrate on the shape that the planets make around the circle in your chart so there's a number of different chart shapes okay so um, they're called the splash the bundle the locomotive, the bowl, the bucket, the seesaw, and the splay. Now, they're his inventions, okay? So okay. nobody else had even had this idea before he came up with it. If you were born on certain dates, mm -hmm. at certain times, you could have, and these are people that I work with a lot, have all your planets on one side of the circle, and that's called a bowl. So you've got everything. It doesn't matter which part of the circle, because the circle's a circle, but it could be one side of the circle are all of your planets. Mm -hmm. So if you think about mm -hmm. the signs that you have planets in, if they're consecutive to each other and within six houses, you'll have what's called a bowl chart because if you imagine mm -hmm. it's sort of like a bowl is like this yeah i've got a splash chart i'm not bold okay if you've got any gemini planets trust me because of the nature of the outer planets and their uh, configurations you're more likely going to have something like me a splash chart all the planets all the way around the circle splosh okay so i like to do a little bit of this a little bit of that a little bit of the other so you can you can tell quite a lot about a person's personality by the placement of the planets around their chart so what's your chart shape where are your planets in yours so i i, would, I, I wouldn't consider myself a, a bucket but something similar so i have nine ten eleven they'll 12 nothing and they have one planet one in one first house one in second one in third so i have nothing in four five six mm -hmm. seven the sky or in the eight, let's say, but yeah, I have nothing. Don't, you know, for this, but, for this, to use this method, we yes. don't use Chiron, we don't use the North Node. All we use are the planets, Sun, Moon, and Mercury, all the way up to Pluto. Okay. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so, so I have, so I'm, uh, my my uh, uh, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, and eight hearts uh, houses are empty. So I have like a bucket with a nine house, let's say. <laughs> Okay. Like a, a ball. I mean, like a ball with one more house. Ball, with one say. extra bit. Okay. Yes. yes. So there's a lot of people that are born with their now this is this is a stellium astrology so this is you've got all your planets really squished together that's a, a, a stellium chart and that's very much um 
the people that I work with a lot, they've got these really squished charts. So they'll tend to be born between 1979 and 1999. And if they're winter born babies, anywhere from about um, Virgo to February to, to Pisces, they're going to have these more one sided charts because the outer planets are in similar signs to their sun signs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're right. I'm 78 and I have Gemini moon, Mercury and sun in the ninth house. And then I have two planets in Cancer and two planets in, in um, Leo. And then just our planets on the other side, like you know, Pluto, Libra, Uranus, Scorpio, and then Neptune in Sag. That's all. That's kind of. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So you, yeah. you've got. Mm -hmm. And so, so, so when we're looking at a bowl shape or a bucket, the bucket is a bowl with one planet in opposition. Yeah. If we're looking at these very clustered charts these are people that can focus on down they can zoom into something don't like multitasking me splash me i will multitask yeah um now the one that people find the most difficult to get their heads around is the chart shape called a locomotive like what even is a locomotive don't forget he was born in the 1800s they had chuffer trains chuffer 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 and the chuffer trains had metal bits on them that moved like this zhong, zhong, zhong. so their chart shapes are an uneven shape so it looks like they've got a cluster of planets maybe in houses one two three and then they've got house um they've got planets in six seven eight and nothing's totally in opposition to each other and so it's an uneven um energy within the chart so we have to think about the chart shape denotes the energies in our chart and the energies that we ourselves have yes so uh, if you yeah so it, it indicates what your energy is like yeah yeah I understand. So, so they have maybe issues with understanding their energy the locomotives they'll have uneven energy uneven. it's not a good or yeah it's not a, or a good bad good or a bad thing but they will have an uneven energy within their chart yeah, yeah. um so that means if you were yeah. working with them they'll probably be all systems go one minute and then they'll need to have a rest and then there'll be all uh, systems go again. So they're going like that. And then if you imagine seesaw charts, they're the ones yeah. I like actually. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So you've got you've got planets in opposition and your yeah. charts divided in half and you've got either three planets to seven or two planets to eight or one to nine. You know, the seesaw charts, again, they need to put some energy in one thing and some energy in something else, depending on what location those planets are in the oppositions, yeah? Yeah. So you're not changing anything about astrology and how we view it. It, it, it. He doesn't say that in his book. He's just talking about the energies of the person's chart. Yeah. So what would you say, which shape would people have, have most uh, challenges of understanding their own energies? Would it be the seesaw because it's divided or the locomotive or... You know, because, because I feel that a bucket or a bowl, it's kind of, it's, you know, when you have a stellium, it's kind of, you more understand it. Like, I, I understand Gemini energy. I have so many planets, I can go, you know, I can understand it, right? Mm -hmm. But somebody who has a division, and then what's happening with them, right? Like, do they have chal more challenges to, with their energy just to use them well or use them, um, you know, yeah. in a more productive yes. way? Yeah, I and mean, obviously it depends what signs of the zodiac are in each um chart shape so if you're a stellium and you're a scorpio you're going to want to drill down but if you're a stellium or you're a bowl or, or even if you're a bucket and you're a gemini that wanting to bounce around and do things is going to be a bit more of a challenge so i wouldn't say that one chart shape and we have okay. to be careful about making a, um sort of um what's the word on look we have to be careful about presumptions yes Yes, okay. and saying that we'll know what the person's like. But I think of all the chart shapes that I have worked with, locomotive is probably the most difficult because they okay. themselves need to focus where their planets are and understand their empty bits, so the empty houses that they don't have planets in, yeah? And what would the locomotive, the, the, the first planet that is actually pulling all the others around, what would that planet represent in their chart? Most 
important because it's the one that pushes the wheel, so to speak. Because he called it a locomotive because they had chuffer trains back then. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, the like the train to join the two wheels together was this metal bit that held the two wheels together. And so it's sort of like to, to, to get them going, you need to find out where their singleton planet is, the one that starts. So if you're looking at the chart, it doesn't matter where the ascendant is. We, we won't know what their first planet is. It'll be where that first planet falls. So if you're going from the ascendant to the beginning, say their first planet's in the fourth house, then the energies need to be focused in that particular house. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that. And then the planet actually helps them. Maybe understanding that planet helps them to understand everything else. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just thinking, you know, I'm thinking about a client work and you when I have this situation to, to, to focus. Okay. Uh, that's amazing. Um, I know we had a uh, we had a bucket shape just recently with the moon on opposite on the other side. Like there was a full moon in Virgo right now. Yeah. Right? We had a, this bucket shape. So what would this mean? What would we emphasize on that planet particularly, you know, which is on the other side? It's very like it's all alone there. Everything mm -hmm. is. So, so what is happening with that energy? Well, if you if somebody was born then, okay, so I'm looking at the chart now, so I've just called it up on astro.com. So you've got a cluster of everything all on one side. Again, we have to take into account what houses things have been, but if we're just looking yeah. at chart shape, to have nine planets on one side of the circle and one planet in opposition, that's called a bucket. Mm -hmm. And the most important planet then is the moon, because the moon isn't included in all of the other planets, yeah? So that's a, what we call a, a singleton planet planet and the mm -hmm. singleton planet is the one that needs the TLC especially if it's the moon I mean I prescribe mm -hmm. and this is how crazy I am I prescribe on <laughs> people's moons okay so I'll give them a flower essence there's wow. one for each of the 12 signs of the zodiac and if somebody has a moon that's a singleton planet I would suggest a particular flower essence to help their singleton moon because their moon is now all on its own and will feel lonely. It's not part of the gang on the other side, yeah? Yeah, and especially for moon because it needs to have this belonging, right? So so it's it's, it's a hard hard thing to have. I understand that. I actually have a, I have a friend with that, so I understand exactly what you're talking about. That's interesting. Um, what else can you share with us uh, from this uh, magic book? <laughs> what else? What, what, we had a sp you mentioned play, okay? So you mentioned you have a... Yes, there's play and there's also, there's two, this is what the book looks like if you want to get it. Okay, okay. I don't mm -hmm. awesome. that's come back, uh, sort of um, mirror image, but it's called The Guide to Horoscope Interpretation. And the guy who wrote it is Mark Edward Jones. So you probably have to buy a second-hand copy of it, because trust me, it came out a long time ago. Um, I think it was originally printed in 1941, and the copy that I've got was born in, uh, was published in 1978. He wrote it in 1888, right? Mm, so wow. it's... It's a long time ago. Um, so now I've got a splash chart, but there's a thing called a splay chart. Yeah. And a splay chart is very, very uneven around the circle. So mine, my planets are all around the circle, a little bit here, a little bit there, blah, blah, blah. But if you get um, the splay chart, that's an uneven energy. That's a lot more difficult as well because the person will be juggling all these balls in all these different areas and they won't know where to focus. And that's quite distressing for people. You know, should I be doing this? Should I be doing that? And so once again, take the sun, the moon, and the ascendant as the most important planets and put the focus there. You know, maybe sort of look at the north node or something. It's it's quite tricky not knowing what sign of the zodiac we're talking about. You know, like the, at the moment, the yeah, sun's yeah. in Pisces. So if it was a Pisces I was advising mm -hmm. and they got that sort of shape, splay chart, I'd say, you know, where's your sun located? What house is it in? Are you actually living the house that your sun is in? So that's important. Are you putting your energies into that place? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can, you know, I'm thinking, you know, all, all these examples in my head, but my dad, he has like a really splay all over yeah. and his son is unaspected at all. He, it's not, he has an unaspected son. I know. And what sun sign is he? Pisces. Which is even... Oh, poor love. <laughs> poor love. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just thinking about his life and he was, he's searching for something his whole life, you know, because he right. couldn't pinpoint like he he wanted to do this and he he majored into you know he wanted to be a psychologist and a civil engineer and and photographer like he was he was all over the place like i just through his life he he was you know um it's just interesting how how that energy is really okay and what yeah what's his ascendant in his moon uh 
uh, Sagittarius, and he has Jupiter on it on the ascendant in Sagittarius. And his moon? Uh, Libra. Ten house, I think. Nine, uh, ten, 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 nine house or ten house, something on the on the, on the cross. It's not going to be settled. If you've got a Sagittarius ascendant, yeah, forget no. about settling down. Forget about having the same job all your life. Forget it. And and the and the ascendant and the moon are going to uh, the ascendant and the sun are going to square each other. They're both mutable. Mutable likes change. It's change is important for them. I'm married to a Taurus. <laughs> they are settled and do the same thing and eat the same food, near enough the same food every day. Yeah. My ex husband was a gem or is a gem because he's not dead. My ex husband. <laughs> is a Gemini <laughs> and he and he's got a Sagittarius ascendant so he'll move and he'll change job and he's oh, in the yeah. job for six months you know so you just need to remember the signs of the zodiac as well so it's not it's not a problem yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah 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 you know you mentioned you know I'm thinking about, I have mutable uh, I have mutable angles and then although I have like a, almost a bucket uh like a ball mm -hmm. I'm sorry I will have a ball it, it's still this mutability helps me multitask and stuff so I do have but I mean I need to focus when I make a decision I really can't drill in so it's just interesting how this so what's your really ascendant helps. then? Uh, Virgo. Virgo. I'm a late oh. Virgo rising. Yeah. Oh gosh, poor you. Okay, what's your moon sign? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. That's the only earth I have, so I'm actually grateful. It grounds me. That's the and only the, earth I have. And the sun's Gemini and the moon's Gemini. And Mercury's Gemini and Midheaven is Gemini. Your sun and your moon are Gemini. Yes. I'm just I'm balsamic face. I was just a balsamic face, yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah because <laughs> i was wondering how you could do so many things i mean i'm i've got moon in gemini and i just about managed to get online tonight but every time i look at your account it's like oh she's done something else you know, so. okay yeah 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 and i to be honest i have many many guests astrologers who have moon in gemini for some reason i attract them i have them it's amazing so 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 i just, I just learned that you have a gemini yeah. moon it makes me so happy i didn't know that <laughs> oh, <that's so> <laughs> It's, it, there, there is this moon connection uh, yeah. that it's not really like you can feel it. That's amazing. Awesome. Uh, this is cool. I just want to encourage everybody uh, to go and uh, listen to Mary's podcast about this topic. There's an episode and there's examples. So there's yes. showing other examples, everything. Thanks. Yeah, uh, so that's the, very the first three episodes. So the the podcast, if you Google it, is called Learn Astrology with Mary. It's on Spotify and all the various different um, podcast providers. Um, and the first three episodes, I think it is episodes one, two, three. Um, let me just double check. They've got uh, all the chart shapes on there, and the chart. And if you actually go to where the podcast is located, which is a website called Libsyn. Um, Gosh, I've done 300 something episodes. I'm trying to get to the first page. Um, yeah, the first three first three episodes are chart shape. And the reason I taught astrology like that, starting with the chart shape, is because I remember right at the beginning trying to learn astrology and looking at a chart. So I've got one in front of me, like all those lines, what do they all mean? And and all these symbols, what's that all about? And so I say to people, when you're first learning astrology, forget the lines. Just don't worry about them. Just look and see where is everything in the circle on your chart and then decide which chart shape you might be. Learn a little bit more about it, how your energies are best utilized and then continue to learn astrology. Because right at the beginning, learning all those flipping symbols. I mean, yeah, come I on now. <laughs> Well, you know, I, I love patterns. It's really interesting. Um, oh, I heard yeah. about something. I don't know if this, if this uh, comes to this uh, topic, but it's, it's something like I heard about Rosetta. Is that a shape or is that something else? No, no, that's an aspect shape. That's oh, it shapes from okay, the aspects. Okay. So yeah. Like this uh -huh, is a okay. chart shape yeah, 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 okay. that relates to the planets dotted around the circle itself. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So did we cover everything? I think we did. Like the bucket, I think the we bowl, did. So it's bucket, bowl, splay, seesaw, locomotive. I think it's that splash, bundle, locomotive, yes, yes. bowl, bucket, seesaw, yes. and splay. Yes. And since we're Gemini moons, we did it quick. So guys, <laughs> <laughs> really quick. if you don't have any questions, uh, this was amazing. Uh, you now have to reference the book and Mary's podcast to learn more. And of course, uh, um, don't forget to follow Mary for more uh, insights. This, was, this has been lovely. I think it's been short, but very interesting. A lot of information. Uh, I want to thank you very much. I know um, 
give me so many things to do. So, uh, oh, and don't uh, forget to follow Astrology Association. I want to uh, shout oh, out yeah, to them the as well. Oh, yeah, the Astrological Association. That if, if you're in the UK, even if you're not in the UK, the Astrological mm -hmm. Association is such... I've been a member for 30-something silly years as a long yeah. time. I've been in practice for a long time. But it, they're really, really nice. They're a good organisation. They're very professional. They have a journal that comes out every couple of months. They have a newsletter list. They have... Now they're doing free um, online Zoom sessions, and I did the first yeah, one. Yeah, Yeah, yes. so duets. So that yeah, so I'm, I, that's how I, I I saw Mary on the first duet. It was duet. Yeah, the yeah, duets. So yeah, yeah, duets. D yeah, duets. I E T S. Duets. Yes. Yeah, it's like dancing, yes. you know. <laughs> but it's two yeah, so people together, uh, and we have a discussion. Uh -huh. Yeah, on, on various topics. So please make sure that you, you register. Uh, it's free, but you can always donate because we always encourage people to donate something because we want to spread the world of astrology uh, uh, through through everything. I, I'm, I'm so happy this, this renaissance of astrology uh, came and that I hope it's going to be in school one day or something. I just want people yeah. to learn. I mean, when I first started learning, astrology wasn't as popular as it is now. It absolutely took off. And that was the indigo generation that brought it about. We won't get into indigo because we'll never get off the call. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but it's still it's still nice that to see, you know, there's always everything on the internet to so be discernment. Discernment is always something you need to be, be considered when you talk about uh, absolutely. anything in life, especially yeah. astrology these days. Yeah. Awesome. So I think we covered everything. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you, I appreciate your time and knowledge you. and sharing this. And give her love. Okay. Thanks, Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.